Welcome to Spicks and Specs, the music quiz show that tonight features such guests as Frank Woodley, Hamish Blake, Denise Scott, Brian Mannix, Julie Anthony, Brian Mannix's mum, Anthony Kalia, Ali McGregor and Richard Gill. Why? It's because we're about to show you all our favourite bits from 2007. So, let's get stuck into it. Here they are. Sweet song on a quaker Then you light my morning star A burning love This, my friend, is a fool's gold sandwich <laughs> How, you How could you eat look, that? I'm going to go... I, I think that, that doesn't look as bad as I thought it would look. <laughs> <Yeah. Wow. laughs> I challenge you to eat it. Just, just wait, everyone. Remember, he had two of those. Yeah, how do you finish that and go, two. still hungry? <laughs> <laughs> this was what Elvis Presley had every night at 10 p.m. Oh. On each of these is a jar of peanut butter, uh, a jar of strawberry jam, a pound of fried bacon on a loaf of bread that has to be hollowed out in order to take all of that. Would anyone like to try it? No. Yeah. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yeah. Does anyone else think that doesn't look as bad as you imagined? <laughs> like, you thank say, you. Thank God, because I just thought, I'm turning into Elvis. Yeah. <laughs> Without any of the talent or the jumpsuit. <laughs> oh, well, one jumpsuit. I reckon but... if you had someone from, like, one of those diets where you have to count points, their calculator would explode. <laughs> You'd be, you would have yeah. the scientists going, we actually yeah. don't have a number that yeah. big. Can you at least... Oh, my God, that's a... Oh, no. Oh, wow. Just... What? <laughs> This is a quarter of what Elvis ate! <laughs> I'm, I'm on a diet compared to Elvis. Gone, gone, gone. Mm -hmm. Eat, 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 I don't believe you just did that. It's alright. It's alright, isn't it? You quite yeah, like I bet that. it is. It's weird. <laughs> it's weird because... Yeah, thank you. No, that's... I think Al's in love. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it's strangely alluring. <laughs> Look, I couldn't eat a whole one. <laughs> it's, the, it's the combination of the bacon and the jam. Really? Mm. I feel like I'm on Iron Chef. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're definitely not on The Biggest Loser. <laughs> <laughs> You, you have been in, in the headlines and all that kind of stuff. You yeah. were virtually outed on radio by a traffic reporter because, you know, they know what's going on in the world. Of course they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did that even happen? It's funny because the way it happened, like, in February or so, I was talking to my manager about it and said, you know, I'm comfortable within myself now to make that next step. So, yeah. I think what you've done is very positive and very encouraging for all the young people out there who might be struggling with their own identities. What I find is quite strange is that it's in Australia, in this day and age, but it's there's all issue. this big hoo-ha. Yeah. Yeah. Who cares what you do in your bedroom? Come and do it in mine. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to be rude, Anthony, but what were you up to that a, tra a guy in a helicopter could see that you were doing? 
I would like I to mean, know. Really? <laughs> and if you're taking the freeway to work, look oh, at yeah. it. It's the Allegri Miserere. Yes. And it was owned by the Sistine Chapel Choir in the Vatican. Yes. And it was written out by Mozart from memory after one hearing. Uh, three points out of three. Get it on! After one, he, he, he wrote it from memory after one after hearing. One what age was he when he did that? Uh, I have no idea. This is like, this is like a little cocktail party. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. Uh, so tell me, Richard, did, did he really do that in one hearing? <laughs> yes, he did. Now, Richard, there is a whole story about uh, Mozart in that piece, but I've got a feeling you're probably going to tell it better than I am. No. So please go ahead. <laughs> Nobody likes a clever clown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, correct me, correct me if I've got my facts wrong. That piece of music was uh, basically owned by, you said the Sistine Chapel, yeah. or, or the Pope, Pope really, yes. who wouldn't let it be played unless he gave it the rights. Correct. So Mozart happened to hear it, and because of his incredible memory, mm -hmm. then went home, wrote it out, and yeah. then took it to the masses. Yes. The thing yeah. is, it's got a huge number of verses. So... There, every time yes, you yes. have one verse, <laughs> every time there's one verse, yes. you get a chance to do the chorus. You do, you, you do. Know. And then there's a topsy at the end that's a ripper. <laughs> oh, no. Which is obviously done by memory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know many Irish people who've done things from memory. Yes, indeed. indeed, indeed. Walk home. Walk home from memory. The yes. <laughs> <laughs> are you ready? Okay, here we go. Remember, click. Here we go. You are my fire. My one desire I love when you say, get ready, that I want it that way. Dance, tell me why ain't nothing but a heartache. Tell me why ain't nothing but a mistake. Tell me why I never want to hear you say and turn. I want it. Now, Lisa, you also had to record. You've had to record ringtones for people, have yeah, you not? Yeah, yeah. What, what was it that you had to record? Well, um, some of them were kind of spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Uh, one of the guys in, um, in the Jacks, he said I, I had a really sexy voice and he wanted me to <laughs> tell him he was a dirty boy. Over and over. <laughs> <laughs> you dirty boy. You dirty, dirty, dirty boy. You dirty, <laughs> dirty boy. And that was his ringtone? Dirty. <laughs> wow, I, 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 think the, the, I, mean, I think the ABC just went from three to four dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine what? they're going off on the bus. You've been looking at you going, it's my mum. <laughs> the musical film High Society. Yes? Um, Cole Porter. No! Oh, no! It was oh. based on which play? The Philadelphia story, story was oh. what I was looking for. Too bad. Your three five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. 
Uh, back in the closet. <laughs> well, I'm not the nerd at the front of the class getting everything right. <laughs> Some other people have a go. <laughs> oh, don't, don't say that because that plays to all my insecurities. You got a quick buzzer hand, yeah. baby. Come you on. ain't got to worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on, Lisa, talk him up. That's yeah. right. You got, you got a hot buzzer hand. Don't. <laughs> my phone on, but I think it's vibrating. <laughs> I grew up thinking I was just an ordinary kid, just doing things that ordinary kids did. But years passed me and I began to see certain strange abilities. I'm not a hero, but I'm not a freak. I just have very mild superpowers. <laughs> very mild superpowers. Like sometimes when I'm cycling with headphones on, I can predict exactly where I'll be at the end of a song. <laughs> very mild superpowers. Frequently in kitchens where I've never been, I can sense the location of the cups and crockery. I'm talking about very mild superpowers. My legs aren't bionic, my eyes aren't x-rays, but I'm a very good judge of whether things will fit through doorways. <laughs> Sofas, tables in particular. But for every very mild superpower, there's a very mild super weakness too. I get nauseous round the smell of bins. I'm afraid of certain shop mannequins. I hate the cheese that's individually sliced and vacuum wrapped in plastic. I can never tell when people are being sarcastic. <laughs> oh, Dave, I really like that new song. Do you? No. <laughs> oh, maybe that's because you fear. My very mild superpowers. <laughs> Look within, I'm not a mutant, I'm just a man. A man who happens to be frighteningly good at getting broken pens to work <laughs> again. And if Julie and Denise, your stars and Mars are. Saxophonist and radio announcer Wilbur Wilde, accompanied by Elga, uncanny X-Man Brian Mannix with Jan, and pianist and composer David Hirschfelder with Phyllis. Which of those Aww. stars matches which one? We're tearing up. I know. Oh, no. <laughs> Wilbur, I don't know whether Elga's your mother, but you look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> There's a real bond there. <laughs> I'm thinking I'd like to just see... This isn't the final arrangement. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see Elga in front of Brian. Yes. Brian and Brian Wilbur, Brian moved behind you Elga, swap. swap with Wilbur. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Okay. See if there's the same chem. Oh, look, Elga doesn't want to <laughs> It's fine. Brian's, Brian's a friend of mine, mum. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, I think Elga's got a very similar sense of humour to what I know of Brian's. <laughs> we need to see another swap. So, With Wilbur Brian and David. Other, other you and David swap. Okay. Wilbur and so David swap. Behind All right. All right. Yeah. That's it. Everybody looks devastated oh, no, when they're... I know, I know. I don't know what's Phyllis, going on out there. said, David, no. But Denise, this isn't for permanent adoption. It can all be... <laughs> <laughs> I know, I am I rather <laughs> taking it seriously. Yeah, I think they'll all be all right. go without your sonnies, Wilbur? I... That's In fact, no. Wilbur, no? Put, maybe put your sunnies on Phyllis and just see uh, if Phyllis that's right. Try, try those try on. Try those on. Try those on. Try those on. Oh, oh, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Wilbur's mum, I think, the way she gave those sunglasses. Yeah, right. I think that's what we're stuck with. You're stick with that? We're happy with yeah, that. Yeah, that's it. All right. Oh. Would the people who are standing behind their real mums please present them with the flowers? Oh. <laughs> Come on, guys. No, you're doing great. <laughs> 
think of us as the B team. We'll just jump in at the end. Unchained just for fun. Um, melody. Un unchained Melody, you've got that one. Well done. How deep is your love? The boy, block. Isn't the Hamish? Oh. Three from the bottom, Myth. How deep is your love? Not Very yet, deep. Yet, Thanks no. for asking. Oh, All the young, the young dudes, where is dudes. it? Oh, Killing me, stop no. with his too many. love. 30 days in the jungle. Second days. from the top. Yeah, too many. Uh, what are you holding there, Miff? We can't really sort of. Own shot. Um, um, Killing me softly with his own shot. I've seen got the got film, it. but I don't know if it's a song. <laughs> yeah, you got it. You got, got it. it. That's it. You got it. Put that down the bottom. <laughs> oh. Too many holes. <laughs> <laughs> Too many holes. Well, <laughs> we've all been. That top one should have been Too Many Puppies by Primus. Puppies? Puppies there. What a great song that was. It's, it, it is the yeah, ultimate right. striptease song. Right. Welcome to the puppies. <laughs> <laughs> See, if we're on a different network now, right now, if the camera shot will be going... <laughs> 30 days in the hole oh, by yeah. Humble Pie. Little Red Corvette, you got correct. <laughs> well done. <laughs> uh, Unchained Melody, you also got correct. The Righteous Brothers. The boy who blocked his own shot, somehow you got right. Uh, that should have been... It's in his kiss. Yeah, oh, nice the ship ship oh, song. Uh, Welcome to the Jungle would have been lovely. But <laughs> I'm OK with Welcome to the Puppies. <laughs> How deep is your love? The Bee Gees, you did get uh, all the young dudes. You also got David Bowie. Killing Me Softly with his song was what oh, we were yeah, looking for at the end. Yeah. Having said oh, that, oh. I was really hoping you were going to go the other way because we almost had Killing Me Softly with his hole. <laughs> 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 Only slightly better than How Deep Is Your Hole? <laughs> would have been. And I think that might be better. <laughs> <laughs> It, it's in his hole, the new anthem for our customs team. <laughs> <laughs> God bless them. If you've just tuned in, you're watching the best of Spicks and Specs from 2007. And not only the best bits, here are some of the bits that didn't make it to air this year. I mean, I have a propensity to make an absolute titter myself in front of people who I really respect. And so it's one of those things where you want to say, when I meet someone like you, Lord, I want to say... I've been listening to you since I was 17 years old and I just, it, all your stuff is great. But I'm also aware of the fact that people probably do that all the time and it probably gets quite boring. Never. Oh, does it? <laughs> oh, OK. Oh, well, that's good. That's giving me permission to shine. I've got to say, though, I'm, I'm, a bit like, I'm a bit like you. I tend to lose it a bit around people I really kind of admire. Um, the other day we were interviewing Paul Stanley from Kiss on my radio show. And um, he turns up, and it's Paul Stanley, member of one of the biggest rock and roll bands oh, in the world. Shandy, Whether... Shandy, the oh, lights exactly. are lonely without my you. My brothers loved him when I was growing up, and Paul Stanley walks in, and I'm, I'm just started losing my mind. It all went, <laughs> and I had some half-eaten toast that I'd had a bite out of. I said, "Hi, Paul, nice to meet you. Do you, do you want some toast?" Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And I, and I looked at what I was offering him, which was a piece of Vegemite toast with three bites out of it. <laughs> <laughs> What is it about that show that you love so much? What is it about Australia's Next Top Model? Yeah. Oh, my God, in the first episode, one girl called another girl an ugly Dero mole. I mean, <laughs> what's not to love? I happen to know you also have the walk down, Pat. Shut up, Adam. Go on, you so want to show us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they, they spend see, like, hours talking about you have to relearn how to walk. You walk, and this like... walk is out. <laughs> no. Well, no, not if, That's you're, out. not if you're a dressage horse. No, no. <laughs> But I'm saying right. that there, 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 there is saying, actually a time for I'm that right walk. Here. What are you saying? <laughs> <laughs> no. But this is my favourite walk. It's the one where you walk like that, right? And then you get to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Once I was doing a show and someone's phone went. What? And and this is no word of a lie. Their phone went, <clears> they got the phone out of whatever the phone was in, took the call. <gasps> It wasn't in a very big room either. It was wow. pretty obvious that someone was taking a call and said, yeah, I'm at a gig. It's not very good. <gasps> <gasps> oh, my God. I just want to apologise for that. <laughs> 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 nice work, Hamish. Genuinely. And I, I, I liked how you got into a, a, into a really good groove there and were to lay down. Gary yeah. Neewon style. Yeah, no, I was looking for sort of like a yellow jacket, but there wasn't one, so... But that's OK, maybe <laughs> next time.
This has like become one of those Olympic interviews afterwards. How did you feel the race went, Hamish? Oh, yeah, pretty good. No, she's a good bike. She's got a lot of speed in her. Um, <laughs> yeah, a little bit, little bit challenged by the Swiss and the Dutch on the mountains, but we pulled away. <laughs> so that was really good, but we've still got stages four and five tomorrow, so you don't want to count your chickens, etc., etc. I've just thanked the support crew. And, um, you know, well done, guys, for getting the songs. It's a team effort. Oh, I did the writing bits, so I suppose you did a bit. So. <laughs> Cheers, thanks. Oh. Hamish, um, we'll need a... We'll need a sample. <laughs> 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 okay, all right, here we go. Uh, drink? Uh, where is it? What? Cocktail. A drink? Cocktail. Oh, I'm trying to work here! <laughs> I thought you wanted something to up. <laughs> What's going on? Talk about a loose woman. That's <laughs> it. You don't. Then I'll... <laughs> I'm Mr. Death. I've come about the reaping. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got a very yeah. bad cough. Does somebody want to tell that unicorn to keep it quiet? <laughs> Be <laughs> John Lee. Uh, Melon Camp. Oh. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so that is absolutely just it. <laughs> Doesn't matter how many times you guys walk off, he's still going home to a supermodel. <laughs> TT2 goes into the room with C3PO. Everyone's listening to the door. <laughs> you can just hear little robot cigarettes going. Are you ready, Ben? Are you ready? Hands off. Let's do it, huh? Here we Chewbacca noise. <laughs> what do you want him to write? Oh, today, whatever you want to write. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got no red man blue breaking on my mind. Sorry, if I left you all behind. <laughs> so there's your score and there's this score. <laughs> <laughs> and we speak for the people, the audience, <laughs> and we take points as we see them. Do we not? <laughs> best bits we could cobble together from another year of Spicks and Specs. We'll be back in a few weeks' time with another Specky Christmas, and of course, we'll see you again in 2008 for Season 4 of Spicks and Specs. Until then, though, here is our favourite ending of the year. I see trees of green To myself, 
What a wonderful world. I see skies of blue and clouds of white. The bright, blessed day, the dark, sacred night. And I think to myself, What a wonderful world The colors of the rainbow So pretty in the sky Are also on the faces Of people going by I see friends shaking hands Saying how do you do Oh.